Welcome to Eternal Truth Now. I'm Elaine Haynes. I'm Kerry Haynes. And we're glad you joined us today. We're doing a series on Count It All Joy because God is working. And we're specifically today talking about God will prune or refine to bring forth new wine. And in the last session, we talked uh, about pruning quite a bit and just began to talk about refining. And so we're going to be doing that today. And we're going to open in prayer and then get into the Word of God, which we love because we've seen its power to transform. Father, I just pray that we would minister according to the ability that you give, yes, that we would be open to hear you, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. God, that it, we would just get out of the way, we'd be empty vessels. God, I just ask for a supply of your Spirit to illuminate your Word, mm -hmm. Lord. Amen. That this wouldn't be dead letter, but it'd be spirit yes, and life. Jesus, Amen. your words are spirit and life. Yes, They're Lord. life and to dry bones. They're mm -hmm. a lamp unto our feet. And yes, uh, they encourage and strengthen God and just help us. We thank you that we have a helper to help us. Yes, to help us now yes, that Jesus. you would get all the praise, yes, truly, Lord. and you get all the glory. Yes, For your name's sake, yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 So the key verse... For this series is James 1, 2 through 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And perfect doesn't mean you never do anything wrong. It means you're complete, you're whole, you're full. And that is what God wants. He wants us to be, to be and walk in fullness of all that he has created us to be and so again we're going to be talking about refining the refining process today and what what that looks like and what the bible tells us about that and some examples and the refining is heating to the point of where the dross comes off the impurities come on they come to the surface and they can be skimmed off that's what happens with refining gold and silver or any other metal the impurities in it and then that lump of metal get heated up it becomes liquid and then the, the dross comes off and so that's what happens in our lives when you know pressures we feel like we're under a lot of pressure it's heated up our situations heat up and then things come out of us and god wants those things skimmed off and um so that's what um refining also and it means backslider it means to go back to retreat to backslide and it means refuse or scoria which is done so the those Things that are of no value get removed, you know, because oftentimes we we spend time and energy doing things that have no eternal value, and only God knows truthfully. I mean, we have an idea of some things. We know there's certain areas where maybe we are leaning into some things that, or we waste time. Certainly, we all know about that. But sometimes we think we're doing the work that God's called us to do, and, and there's times we talked about in the last session about He'll prune some things off. But there's some refinement, even in those areas where we're doing things for God. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this, too, because we can be ignorant of ourselves, you know, that we don't realize we have these things. And okay. talk about when God, you know, in Revelation uh, chapter 3, he says, Because you say I am rich. Now, he, first of all, this, this to the churches that perhaps are, were really walking in more fullness than really any church that you see now. Because mm -hmm. this was in the early church age. And he says, because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and know not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's Jesus saying that. Yes, saying this. Right. He said and here. He, and then he says it's wonderful the way the next he says, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yes. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayst see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Amen. Amen. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm -hmm. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. Amen. God, God, we just we thank you. Just pray that you knock on our door. You knock on our door right now. 
so this refiner's fire, you know, buy of me gold tried in the fire. I mean, you talk about that dross rising to the top. Mm -hmm. And in Malachi uh, chapter 3, verse, verses 1 through 3, it says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Yes, Lord. Even the messenger of the covenant. Thank you, Father. Whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire yes. and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Amen. Yeah, there's a lot there. There's a lot there. You know, one of the things is the Levites were the priests. And, you know, in Revelation, Jesus tells us in chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests. We are now that priesthood that is responsible. What does a priest do? God, you know, there's so, so much here. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost, for one. We are the temple now, but we're a pri kings and priests. He's given us authority, and as the priesthood, we are the ones that stand in the gap for those that don't know him yet, that don't know that they can come boldly before the throne of grace and ask for help in time of need. So we are those, we are those intermediaries bringing, we're not the ultimate intermediary, which is Jesus himself, but we are his body in the earth to, to be that ambassador for his kingdom, to be those representatives, to be those spokesmen that bring others in that awaken and enlighten people and prepare the way for his coming into their lives. There's so much in that. We, we pray for others. That's another thing priests do is they pray for others. They intercede on their behalf for their sins. And ultimately, you intercede to Jesus to move in their lives. Yeah, and you know, a priest ministers unto God. Yes, yes. That's the first thing that they Yeah, do. they Absolutely. minister Amen. unto God. yes. And he wants a holiness set apart for him. That's what holiness is, is to be set apart for him to recognize that that is what we're to do is we are set apart for God. Yeah, yeah. We're and, his vessels. You know, I, I love the word of God and I love the book of Revelation, you know, because he, he says at the very start that uh, blessed are they that read the words from this book. Yes. I can't exact quote. Right. And then when you read that, that, that we're kings and priests, that, that's perspective on exactly what reality is. Yeah, it's not you're not you're not you're not running after this, running after that. Oh, if God would do this for me, if God right. would do that for me, what could be better than just really to to, to be to to walk in that king and priest anointing that that He's made you to be? That's when you realize that that's who you are. It's a sobering thought too, though, because we're ultimately we're responsible. We're, that's that's a that's a heavy calling, you know. To if you're a king, you you need to to perform rightly and justly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a high position that you're gonna you're accountable for multiple lives, not just your own. Right, right. For multiple, well, if he's, a, yeah. as a king, he's given you responsibility. You know, a metron that he's given you that you're overseeing or undergirding, as some would say, you know, but that you're, that there are people in your life he has, he has given you to intercede for and to speak into and to raise up and to mentor and to, and to preach the gospel, to bring his kingdom. Yeah. And so 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, what? Paul says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Your body is just the think about temple that. of the Holy Ghost. Just think about just to I hear do, that yes. to hear that verse, that your body is yes. the temple yes. of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not, not your, your own. own. Right. 
Right, you're bought with a price, Jesus tells us. He bought you with a price. And really? actually, that's where the freedom is. Yes, because Re you know he's you're good. You're not trying to hold right. on to your life. Right. You know, you lose your life for your sake because you're not your own. Right. You're bought with a price. You're bought the, with a price. The, the blood of Jesus Christ has bought you because you were in your sin. You deserved death, and he took that for you. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You know, he's, he calls us to be separate. To be set to recognize that we are to live unto Him, and you know, there's so many. What does that mean to have these about be um, with idols? It's those things we turn to instead of turning to Him. And sons and daughters, you know, and what struck me in John chapter one verses nine through thirteen, when Jesus, when it's talking about Jesus, Jesus is the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. And the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave he power to become the sons of God. You know, we are children of God. It says, to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You know, there's a reality that we are all children of God. He put something in us, that light. Okay, he created us. But Jesus gives us the power to become sons and daughters there's a difference between being a young child you know you put away childish things as you become older and then you're when you become really a true a son or a daughter in this aspect it's talking about you bear the likeness yeah you know, you, you back in those days and, and it happens now too where people come into the business the family business and you are taught things you're trained things so that you learn what is necessary to, con to for continuance and for growth and to prosper. And that's what God wants for us to become those sons and daughters of him and of his kingdom and to raise up other sons and daughters. Yeah, and you know, the, again, that word power uh, in the side margin, mm -hmm. it says, to as many as received them, to them gave he the, the right, the right. Yes. to become. The right, yes. The right to become. Amen. Uh, and also, I just I got to share one verse about idols. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were talking about what agreement hath the temple of God with idols, for you are the temple of the living God. And in Hosea fourteen eight, it says, Ephraim shall say. Now again, this is the last book of of the book of Hosea, which is a you know a picture of a spiritual adulterous people, church, right. church right. people, and yeah. the, and the, the the process that God brings them through. And at the end of this, it says, Ephraim shall say, What have I to do any more with idols? Yes. I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green fir tree. From me is thy fruit found. Amen. That's the abiding in him. It, everything comes from him. Our source. He is the source of all life. He is the source of all truth. And... and, and you know, hearing, see, I have heard him. I know yes. my, my sheep hear my voice, yes. and you, you stand on that. Yes. But, you know, there's a lot of voices. There are. There's a lot of voices, but when you hear the voice of God, right. it's like light and life, and it, it dispels that darkness. It dispels that, that propensity you just can't get, a, get rid of on your, your own effort. Right. But you hear his voice. It's like the, uh, what does he say? Your voice is like the fountain of many waters. Mm -hmm. Something like that. But I've heard him and observed him. Mm -hmm. And when you hear his voice and you become acquainted with his voice, no other will satisfy. You know, I... I there's so much chatter. Just let it, just let it, just fall off of you, and just stay in tune with what is he saying, right now. And you know, sometimes you can be having a discourse with someone, and then, 
and then a word, something will be said, and you know it's the Holy Spirit. Right. It's like right in the middle of all this, blah, 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 and then boom, there's the word of, you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit right there. Yeah, and there's a, there's it's called the entrance of yes. thy word is light. Is light, amen. And he sent amen. his word and healed them. Yes. And we had mentioned in the last uh, right. broadcast, now you are clean through the word yes. which I have spoken unto you. Right. So you hear yes. his word yes. and that clarity and cleanness comes. Yes, amen. In and a moment. Amen. And you know what? And that's a part of that refining too is because the, the purity of God's word comes in and that other stuff just falls away by the wayside in that moment. And then you have the clarity to see, oh, this is what's of value. And that, and that's and what, nothing else. That's what, excuse me, that's what he's saying, you know, when we're talking about in Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. If any man hear my voice yes. and open the door, yes. more, Lord. I will come into him yes, and Lord. sup with me. Yes, more, Lord. That's and, and, what we want. and him with me and me with him. And then, Amen. you know, it's interesting. Then the next verse, it's kind of, it says, to him that overcometh, yes. will I grant to sit with. So yes. that's the natural, the, the, the overcoming yes. life is as you sup with him, yes. as you hear him say, come in, yes. come away with me, come yes. away Amen. and sup with me yes. and me with you. And you know what? The more that you do that, the less of the heating of the pressure of that kind of refinement. Because the other stuff, the more time you spend with him, the more all those other things will go dim. You won't even want to have partake of them. But you'll see, you, the more time you spend with him, and allow his light to come in and enlighten those dark places, you don't want to go back. Well, that's what he says. That's yeah. what he's saying here. Right. What have I to do anymore with exactly. idols? Exactly, right. I have heard him yes. and observed him. Yes. And I think, you know, when you mentioned about the trials, I think a lot of time, God, this pressure, this pressure situation, this distress, this right. affliction yes. that, that God allows or, or, of or sovereignly or creates it's right it's to it's to push us yes into come back to me right you've left your first love come right. back to supping with me right. so uh, you want to be an overcomer yeah. sup with me yes you know and so when we get away from that when we get lazy or indifferent then we start to notice, oh, this is what life is like apart from... Well, and sometimes it's it's just life is right. a lot of stuff. I mean, I think about people that have young children, and I remember when it was like that. You don't have a whole lot of time to spend. You can't just sit and shop with them all day. You know, maybe you have young children and you have a job, too. You know, God knows that, and he, he knows, and there's so much grace for you. Spend what time you can with him, and he will he will expand that that time and he will pour into you all that you need for everything that you've gone through in your life right now yeah. you know that's something that i've seen i mean you can right. you know if you have a lot going on god knows exactly what you need and he honors the time that you devote to him right he's he is not expecting it's a heart issue right exactly yeah. exactly Exactly. Yeah, he know he, that's it's right. a hard issue. That's right. So there's no condemnation. You know, not everybody's in a position where they're retired and they can, you know, spend a lot of time just sitting at his feet. And he knows that. He knows that. And he ordained families. And your family is your first ministry. So I just want to say that too. And that God, he sees what you're doing. You're pouring out to your children. You're pouring out in your workplace. You know, and that's all honoring to him, too. It says, you know, do everything is unto the Lord. Yeah. And that is a sacrifice unto him. And he sees that and he honors that and he blesses that. So be blessed in that reality, that truth. That's a good place to be is just be obedient and faithful in what he's given you to do. And that means if that means that's being. That's what he wants your heart. He knows. That's right. He knows your heart. Right. And that's he right. knows that you that's want right. to spend time with, you know. That's right. He knows your heart. Amen. I'm Amen. going to read Matthew 3, 11 yeah. and 12. It says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John the Baptist. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, mm -hmm. whose fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his weed into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's a, just a, 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 that. a great verse. I love that. And uh, when uh, a purge, to, you know, I will purge to what purging 
again, to kind of reiterate what, we're, what we've been saying, to purge, uh, looking that up in the, uh, the concordance and what it actually means is to, to, to purify, to distill. They use that word, to distill, strain, refine. And to, I looked up the definition of distill is to, and now p- picture this in your trial, in this purging, in this, to distill is to extract the essential meaning or most important aspect of. It's beautiful. T- I love that. God does that. He does that. As the husband man, he yeah. does that. He puts you through things to extract the essential meaning of or the most important aspects of. That, you know, if you think about that, you know, in those times of trial, that's what it comes down to. You start to see. What is the most important thing? And he shows you. Yeah, and you, you know how you see it is when in the in the Hebrew lexicon he mentions to, to purge is to squeeze through a strainer. Yeah, right. So when you're in that narrow place right. of being squeezed, yeah. where that new wine is coming yes, out, amen. that refining amen. of that new wine. Amen. Uh, amen. <laughs> amen. You know, and it, it, it's reminderance of, you know, that, that tight squeezing, you know, it's a tight, crowded place. And mm-hmm. Paul says, through much tribulation, you enter the kingdom of God. And when yes. you look up and trace that back, what tribulation, part of what that means is a crowding, a narrowing, yes. a pressing place. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Peter, too. Remember when Peter was sifted? That's right. You know, he yeah. was doing good. He was doing good. But this pride, this this thing of pride was in him. And. And, and Jesus said, you know, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. And, you know, to sift, uh, when I looked that up, if you think about this definition, mm-hmm. to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. That's how mm. pressing yeah. it can be, to try mm-hmm. one's faith to the, the sifting, to try one's faith to the verge of overthrow. But then he told Peter, and when you are converted, mm-hmm. when you return and are converted, strengthen your brother and i looked at that converted and what that means what it can mean is returning to the the true worship of the true god that's good and that's yeah. that thing of observing him again mm-hmm. when right. when you what have i to do anymore with idols yes i have seen him i observed yes. him amen. amen god put me through this to yes. to to distill me to, to you know to to extract Yes. The most important aspect about knowing God. Yes. And maybe in a way I don't know him and per- perceive him or worship. You know, it says God desires that we worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. So this trial can distill yes. you, purify you Amen. to make you a worshiper. That's right. right. Make you a worshiper right. in, in spirit and in truth. Right. And I think about sifting, you know, like when we... You know, when you sift flour, you know, sometimes in the, um, like, um, not the refined flour that you get, but if you had, like, the real, like, wheat, you know, then you right. are sifting it, the chaff comes off. Right. You know, the useless part, the husk, the shell. And he's bringing us down to the other definition, that essence. Yeah, not very much, actually, a lot of times comes through. Right. 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 <laughs> you have a lot of. That's right. That's yeah. a lot of Excess, unnecessary. Unnecessary. And then a little bit pouring right. through that, you know, essential meaning or most important aspect of your relationship with the Lord. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And then that outcome is offering unto the Lord an offering of right in righteousness. And when I think of righteousness, I think of the right two things: right standing with God, that's through the blood of Jesus. It's His righteousness yes. that we stand in. It's nothing in ourselves. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible tells us it's the righteousness of Christ that He died to give us. That we it did that He did an exchange for us. He gave us gives us His righteousness. He takes our filthy rags and gives us. His righteousness. We are righteous before God in God's eyes because of the blood of Jesus that is covering us, because he paid the price for our sins, that we can stand in his righteousness, that we are made new. He's taken away our sin as far as the east is from the west. It's no longer remembered. You're a new creature. 
and you can stand before the holy God in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. What a blessing! That That's that again is. is that 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 unclear sometimes transition right. from what you think is your faith to His faith, right. and it can be the same with your righteousness or His righteousness. You right. know, it's, the Bible says that you know that He is Christ is made unto us sanctification, yes. redemption, yes. and righteousness. Amen. He's made unto us, and He's in us. Yes, Christ in you, the, the hope, hope of, of glory. glory. So He's God's gonna because He loves you so much. Right, and until He can see His Son shine, yes. there's gonna be this pressing, yes, this distilling, this squeezing you in th in a narrow place. That's right squeezing yes. you and then you but you're able to in that narrow place go wait a minute knowing yeah knowing that the trial of my faith right knowing that he's distilling me refining me so yes. that new wine can come forth so really christ can come forth in me right and you know it's just i had this picture there that you know when you're in that narrow place he's with you he's right. with you. you can endure all things knowing he is with you Jesus is with you. He said, I will never leave you, forsake you. If you get your eyes off yourself and see that he is with you and hold on so tightly to him, that he will carry you through that, that hard and narrow place. The end result, I love 1 Peter 1 and 7, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And I know that, you know, some interpret that to mean when he returns in glory. But I know that I have seen through trials of my faith over and over again that when, that when I see Jesus each time in it, right. that there's a new aspect or a, a deeper aspect, you could say, of who he is revealed to me, appearing to me, and hopefully and prayerfully for all of us that when we go through trials that as we come forth from that trial there will be a a more developed aspect of Christ in us for the world to see that when he is lifted up God will draw all men unto him so we pray that for you grace and peace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that he's doing a work in you he's the author and the finisher. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.